In this ChatGPT tutorial, I'm bringing you 10 prompt engineering tips. That way your prompts and results can go from bad to amazing. And you can actually start using ChatGPT to engineer and help you within your life. Now, ChatGPT can be used for a multitude of different things, from generating vast amounts of knowledge to learning at hyper speeds and even engineering and speeding up boring or repetitive tasks. You can use ChatGPT for all this, but you need to understand how to prompt in the correct way. You need to understand 10 very basic small tips in order to help your prompts go from zero to hero. So let's dive right in. But before we dive right in, I wanted to show you and give you an opportunity to be a part of my ChatGPT mastery course and community. Take a look at this. Right now, as I'm recording this video, we have eight members online learning ChatGPT. And we don't only have this in a course, but we have a community that goes along with it. So as you can see, we can go in here and we can stay up to date with the trends. As you can see, the OpenAI GPT store has just come out. So now we have a thread on making money with GPTs and we have a nice little group strategy for how we're going to do this. And there's just so many benefits that come along with a community. Everyone's in here asking questions. We're starting long threads in order to stay on top of the AI revolution. You get a full course on ChatGPT with currently 45 plus modules, but this course is just growing. You learn everything you need to know about prompting, everything you need to know about every feature in ChatGPT. And this is what's really going to help you get that good understanding is these deep in-depth modules that I'm not going to be uploading on YouTube. If that's something that interests you, you can purchase using the link in the description or the top pinned comment. Now let's get into these 10 prompt engineering tips. Prompt engineering tip number one is to create personas within ChatGPT. Now personas are roles that you can give to the chatbot in order to help you within a specialized situation. That might seem a little confusing, but let me show you a couple ways that you can create personas. You can write out basic prompts like this, write a small birthday letter to my cousin Timmy, and you can send it off and ChatGPT will do just that it will write a nice, small, happy birthday letter to your cousin, Timmy. As you can see, ChatGPT does a nice job at writing out that birthday letter, but what happens if we want this birthday letter to be written within a specific style or a specific tone? Well, we can give ChatGPT that custom persona by hitting this little edit button and saying act as, and then giving that persona or person or style of writing that we want. So I can just say act as a pirate and then I can hit save and submit, and now ChatGPT's tone and style will completely change. As you can see, it's using pirate talk. It says, ahoy to me. As the sun sets over the shimmer and seas, I'd be taking a moment to write ye a letter. So as you can see, it's completely changing the tone. And this is kind of a goofy example, but if you are doing anything with email marketing or content marketing, then it might be good to say, act as a digital marketing expert. You can say stuff like that and ChatGPT's responses will be in that style or that persona. Now, another way you can create personas is by using custom instructions. You can get to custom instructions by going to the bottom left-hand corner and selecting custom instructions. As you can see, I have some roles in here for a content strategist. So now ChatGPT is thinking like a content strategist. And along with that, it's also responding like one too because there's two boxes in the back end of custom instructions. What would you like ChatGPT to know about you? And also how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So you can create personas. And when you have these custom instructions activated, ChatGPT will be taking everything into account in this backend custom instructions database. So if I don't have anything in here, ChatGPT is going to be acting like normal. But if I want, I can create personas in here, or I can use something like my 300 custom personas database. Now this is my 300 custom personas I created for ChatGPT. Now there's 300 different professions in here. So whatever problem I'm dealing with, I can quickly change ChatGPT to that persona by clicking in whatever problem I'm dealing with, copying and pasting it into the back end of custom instructions. So for example, I clicked on growth hacker here and then I pasted in this box. So ChatGPT is taking on that profession slash role of a growth hacker. And then I can be responding like one too by copying the second box within this database and pasting it in. That's how quickly I made it so that I can copy my personas. Uh, I have this product on my website. If you are interested, I'll leave a link in the description or the top pinned comment. But yeah, this is a very cool way that you can quickly change ChatGPT for much better top 1% outputs. I can hit save. And now ChatGPT will be thinking like that persona that I made in the back end. So you can create those long drawn out personas, or you can just say act as a and not get as good of a response, but still the response will be changed and it will be unique. Prompt engineering tip number two is to split tasks within ChatGPT. Now, when you give ChatGPT this prompt with multiple tasks, it can only focus on so much due to its token limit. So each task that you give it, the response isn't going to be dedicated to that task. It has a lot to think about 
has a lot of actions to complete. So if you start splitting up those tasks into smaller sections and you have ChatGPT focus on one task at a time, that's when it can become much more powerful and help you through each situation in much greater detail. As you can see, I have this prompt here telling ChatGPT I want to grow my YouTube channel. Then at the end here, I have my actions. I say, create me a content strategy, subscriber milestones, goals, and tips. So there's four things I want here. A content strategy, milestones, goals, and tips for hitting my subscriber goal. And when I send that off, ChatGPT will generate me all of that information. But the problem is it will not be going in depth on each one of these tips compared to if I split the tasks and ran them off separate. As you can see, it's going in depth. It gave me the content strategy. It gave me the subscriber milestones and goals. But what happens if I duplicate my ChatGPT tab, I start a new chat, and then I copy the same prompt and to give ChatGPT that single action. I'm going to paste it in there, and then I'm going to just say, generate me a content strategy. And I can send that off. And now ChatGPT will be much more in depth on that content strategy than it was in the previous prompt because it had to focus on so many different actions that I gave it, right? But when you split your tasks and you let ChatGPT focus on one action at a time, the responses are going to be much, much better. Just look at the content strategy it's giving me in the prompt where I only gave one action, generate me a content strategy, compared to when I gave uh, multiple different actions. It just gave me a little five-step list, and it's not that in-depth. There's about a sentence under each different header, and within this one, it's giving me long drawn out sentences with a multi-step list. And it's even giving me a table in the prompt where I only asked for one action. It's generating a lot better knowledge here. Prompt engineering tip number three is to set your context for ChatGPT. When you don't give ChatGPT adequate information in order to base its output off of, then the responses, well, they won't be that great. Let me show you an example of a poor prompt and how we can make that prompt better in order for ChatGPT to give us the results we want. As you can see, I have a prompt here that says, I want to create a YouTube channel. Help me find names for it. Well, there's a lot of context that needs to be added within this prompt. I want to create a YouTube channel. That's okay, that's my overall goal. Help me find names for it. Okay, that's an action, but what are we missing in between here? Well, we're missing a lot of context. What do we want the YouTube channel to be based off of? What names do we like? Do we want these names to be long? Do we want them to be short? Do we want them to be witty? Do we want them to be precise, straightforward? These are the things you need to start thinking about when you're prompting in ChatGPT. So let me revamp this prompt to show you what setting context looks like. So there is more that could be said here, but look at everything I added. I am in the artificial intelligence niche. So even that alone would give ChatGPT a much better idea on finding names for the YouTube channel I want to create. And then I say, I don't really like long and confusing names. I want something that is precise and to the point about what the channel mainly covers. So now ChatGPT isn't going to be thinking of any unique and witty ideas. It knows that I want a straightforward name. I don't want it to get cute. I just want a good name. And then I go in depth on even more information. I mainly focus in on computer vision AI. So now it knows my channel is in the artificial intelligence niche. It knows that I focus on computer vision and it knows that I want it precise. So this is a good example of setting context in ChatGPT. I'm going to send off this message and then you will see the results. And it gives me 10 pretty good results. I really like the AI visionary name that it gave us. Prompt engineering tip number four is to templatize your prompts. Now this is a word that I coined. I don't think templatize is actually a word, but what do I mean by that? When you use a prompt that works out very well and you get the exact results that you want, make it a template prompt with bracketed information and save it to a database. That way you can use it in the future or save it to your notes in your phone or a Google doc file. That way you have the ability to copy and paste that prompt for your future use. Let me show you a quick example of how that would work. So let's say I just created this prompt. Create me a unique dinner that involves shrimp and pasta for 10 people. I can send that off and ChatGPT will generate me that dinner with all my requirements. So it's going to take the 10 people into account and what it's going to do is it's going to make the ingredients based on a certain serving size. That way I can feed all 10 people. So let's say you just love the results of this prompt and you want to be able to use it again in the future. Well, what you can do is you can templatize this prompt. I'm going to select this edit button and what templatizing this prompt would look like is finding the things that can be interchanged or the things that you will want to change in the future. So maybe instead of having dinner here, maybe you would like to put lunch or breakfast. So you can put a bracket and then you can put meal type. So now anytime you copy and paste in this prompt, you can quickly change out the meal type that involves, and then you can have optional ingredients here. So I can put ingredients bracket for 10 people. So where it says 10, I can just delete that 
and then put number. So that way I know to put how many people is this meal going to feed. And now we have a beautiful example of a good template prompt that we can go and we can paste in something like a Google Doc, your notes, or what I would do is I would go to my prompt organizer that I have for ChatGPT. As you can see, I already have my prompt title in here. This is kind of a database I built in Notion for organizing my prompts in ChatGPT that I offer for sale on my website. I love building products around ChatGPT. That just helps make my workflow much quicker and much more unique and also just better than the average ChatGPT user. So as you can see, I already have a nice prompt in here that was similar to the prompt I showed you over here. But if I wanted to, if I found out that this one worked better, I could just replace it right there. And boom, now we have that prompt saved in the database. This is kind of a cool way to save some ChatGPT prompts. Prompt engineering tip number five is to use step-by-step -step protocols when prompting in ChatGPT. You might be wondering, what is a step-by-step -step protocol? Well, you can tell ChatGPT to think step-by-step, -step, and this really helps its outputs and responses. Now, this is a prompt engineering tip that I absolutely love because it requires very little effort, but the results and the outputs are much better from ChatGPT. So let me show you a quick example. So I have this prompt here. It says, I'm working on a project where I need to organize a large set of data into a more manageable format. The data includes customer feedback, sales figures, and market trends over the last five years. As you can see, I'm setting my context with ChatGPT. I'm still applying these previous prompt engineering tips that I'm learning into my current prompts. But then I like to add this think step-by-step -step protocol here. I say, think through the process step-by-step -step on how to analyze and categorize this data effectively. And I don't know why I put a question mark there. I can put a period because I'm giving a command, I'm not asking a question. And I'm basically telling ChatGPT, think step-by-step -step through how I'm going to do this. And it lays it out in such a nice format that's easy and manageable to understand. I'm going to send off this message and ChatGPT will get to work. And now look at this, instead of ChatGPT giving us paragraphs of information that are kind of hard to digest, it breaks it down into an actionable step-by-step -step list. Step one, two, three, four, and all the way to eight. And then it even gives us some nice tools and software we can use down here. And it's much easier to learn and to put this stuff into action when getting it into a step-by-step -step list. So that's why this is included in these prompt engineering tips. Prompt engineering tip number six is to specify your proper output formatting. So how do you want ChatGPT to output the information that it's giving you? Do you want it in code? Do you want it in CSV format? Do you want it in a table? Do you want headings, subheadings, bullet list, numbered list? You get the point. You need to specify your output formatting in order to maximize on your outputs. Don't just let ChatGPT guess what you want. Actually tell it what you want. So I'm going to give you an example. So the average ChatGPT user, the ones who are not watching this video and learning how to prompt, would say something like this. Compare the 10 most popular dog breeds. But what you're going to start doing is you're going to start specifying your output formatting like this. Instead of saying compare the 10 most popular dog breeds, you're going to say in a table with the compared criteria being hostility, friendliness, price, lifespan, and weight. We're adding context on what we want being compared. And with that, we are also saying in a table, this is the output formatting that we want ChatGPT to generate the content in. So that's why we're going to specify that. If we wanted it in a bullet list, we would say a bullet list or a numbered list or CSV format for whatever you would need that for. In this case, I don't really know, but you can do that if you're doing this in Google Sheets or something like that. But let me just send off this message. That way you can see ChatGPT put this in a table. And it honestly is one of my favorite output formatting techniques is tables because it helps give a nice comparative view. And also it's just a beautiful format. And when you look at that, it gives me a very nice table comparing the 10 most popular dog breeds. And it's also giving some nice notes here. Prompt engineering tip number seven is to use prompt recalls. And what I mean by that is to ask the chatbot if it missed anything from its previous response. This will allow ChatGPT to dig much deeper and also finding hidden insights to what you might be missing. If you remember our step-by-step -step list where we told ChatGPT to do the step-by-step -step process in order to organize a large set of data into a more manageable format, it gave us a nice step-by-step -step list, but you can always use this prompt recall protocol in order to get more information or see if ChatGPT missed anything. And you can kind of do this by rerunning the prompt. You can run the same prompt and exclude this current knowledge. You can ask ChatGPT, did you miss 
anything with just a question mark. And if it did miss anything, it will give that information. If it didn't, then it will most likely say that it included all the important information that you need to know. I can send off this very simple message and the output will be much better. And you can also gain more knowledge and kind of double check ChatGPT's work. It says, upon reviewing the outlined process, it seems comprehensive for handling a data set. However, there are a few additional considerations and steps that could further enhance your analysis. So had we stopped here, we wouldn't have been getting this extra secret information that ChatGPT didn't initially give us. So look at this, it's giving us 10 plus tips and additional considerations that it didn't previously put in the last response. So if you wanna squeeze out extra information from ChatGPT in order to utilize and use this simple prompt, did you miss anything? It's an amazing prompt and it works wonders. Prompt engineering tip number eight is to utilize prompt sequences within ChatGPT. Now this is a way that you can structure your prompt frameworks in order to be successful every single time by using acronym-based prompt frameworks. Let me show you an example of one of those frameworks. So this would be an example of the GCA prompt framework. I have my goal here in my prompt, I have my context, and I have my action. If I utilize these three things every time within a prompt, it will be a successful prompt. That's why I like utilizing these prompt frameworks is because it gives you that sequence that you can use in order to be successful every single time. It's kind of like a checklist. Do I have my goal in my prompt? Check. Do I have my context? Check. And so on with the actions, right? So I have this goal here. I'm aiming to write a comprehensive research paper on renewable energy sources by the end of the quarter. My focus is to explore innovative technologies in solar and wind energy and their impact on reducing carbon emissions. Something like that. Maybe you're a student doing research on energy sources or something like that. And then I have my context here. You can give information about what you're majoring in or what courses you've completed or what you have specific knowledge on or what specific areas you lack in. Just provide context about your situation. It will help ChatGPT better understand you and the problem that you're dealing with. And then I have the action I want ChatGPT to complete. So this would be an example of utilizing the GCA prompt framework that I've coined. Then I can paste it into ChatGPT GPT. Obviously, you don't need to put goal context action within ChatGPT, but that's just what I like to label it as because it helps me check those things off the list. But when I send off my prompt, I can get rid of all of that and I can just have a normal prompt here knowing that I've checked everything off the box and that I am ready to go. Now, this is quite a long prompt, but when I send it off, ChatGPT will have all the information it needs in order to help me create my research paper. Now, that's just one prompt framework. There are many other prompt frameworks out there, but I suggest you do some research on them and you start utilizing them if you want successful prompts every single time without even having to think about it. Prompt engineering tip number nine is to use natural language. Most of the time, people are trying to use all of this fancy verbiage, but ChatGPT can understand grammar mistakes. It can understand slang like LOL or OMG. It can understand pretty much anything you type out. I have typed out some messages with super wrong spelling, grammar mistakes, you name it. I've typed out horrible prompts, grammar and abbreviation wise, and ChatGPT always comes through because that's the knowledge that it was trained on. So if you use that speech in that text that it was trained on, hence natural language, then your prompt outcomes will be much better as well because ChatGPT will better understand that information in its natural language processing state. Finally, prompt engineering tip number 10 is to combine all of these features. Yes, use these in conjunction with one another. It's very important that you keep all of these in mind. Even if you're utilizing a prompt sequence, make sure that you're providing the proper output formatting you want. And when you're using a prompt sequence, such as that goal context action, make sure that you're splitting tasks and using that GCA prompt framework for each task that you do. Now that's just an example. You don't have to use a prompt framework, but it's very important to combine all of these elements if you want to be successful with ChatGPT and maximize on the outputs to get better results. That's all I have for this video. Again, if you want to learn ChatGPT in depth, I highly recommend joining my ChatGPT mastery course and community, which I will be leaving in the top pinned comment or the description below. Now there are people doing all sorts of different things from all different walks of life. We have scientists, we have police officers, pilots, doctors, business owners, mothers. We have pretty much every use case in there learning ChatGPT. So I highly suggest you join along so you can stay ahead of this AI revolution. With that being said, I also have a ton of free content here on YouTube that you can watch and enjoy as well. So if you did enjoy this video, please subscribe, like, and comment letting me know your feedback. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.